Hi, I'm Cassie, and you're watching Tiger Reviews Circuit Breaker on the Indie Game Report. Circuit Breaker is a one to three player game in which players are trying to have the most happening party around town by connecting cool appliances to their electric panel. I was attracted to this game for three reasons. The first reason is the art. It looked really neat and I wanted to just check it out. The second reason is I like tile placing games and this game looked like it was a tile placing kind of game so I also wanted to check that out. But the third reason is because I was attracted to its theme. My father is an electrical contractor so electrical has been a big part of my life as long as I can remember. I haven't found a game yet that was like this where there's a panel and you're connecting circuits and things like that. So when I saw it, I was like, whoa, I really gotta check this out and see what the game's all about. It's a really interesting game. What I'm gonna do is show you how the game plays and then I'm gonna tell you what I think of Circuit Breaker. In Circuit Breaker, players are attempting to earn the most points after four rounds by attaching appliances to their panel and collecting party favor cubes. Each player begins with a panel and a starting hand of a wire tile and three appliance tiles, as well as one of the three available mice and a secret objective card which tells them which appliances they can attach to their panel to earn extra points at the end of the game. Players also have six dice each, which represent the currency in the game players use to perform some of the actions. Each round, players will all roll their dice, then will take turns choosing to perform one to four different actions on their turn, beginning with a start player. Each of the four different actions may only be done once, but a player doesn't have to perform all of them if they don't want to, and they can be performed in any order. The first action a player may do is place up to two tiles, either a wire or appliance tile. Any tile can be connected to the panel, but if a wire or appliance tile is being connected to an already placed wire tile, the connections must match. They will either be one wire, two wires, or three wires. You also cannot place a wire tile in such a way that a wire will end up connected to a wall, so you have to be careful you don't block yourself in. Once a wire tile is placed, it stays the rest of the game. Appliance tiles also stay where they are placed, unless they are stolen by a mouse, which is the last action I'll be showing you. At the end of the game, any appliances attached to the panel are worth one point, unless a player has two of the same appliance, then they are worth three points total instead of two. However, if the appliance is on the player's secret objective card, it's worth three points alone, or nine points total if the pair of appliances are connected to the panel. The second action available is to buy a wire tile or buy a party favor cube using the values of your dice. Wire tiles cost exactly the value they show and have the path of the connections shown on their backs as well. Party favor cubes also cost the exact value shown on their cards, and the points they are worth at the end of the game is their value cut in half. A four point party favor cube will be worth two points at the end of the game. Players can spend more than one die to buy wire tiles and party favors if they need to. The third action is to simply trade an appliance tile in your hand with one from the top of the deck. The appliance tile traded off is discarded face down. The final action involves the mouse. The mouse moves around play areas and the appliance deck, stealing appliances for its owner. If a player chooses to use their mouse, they place it on an appliance of an opponent that they wish to steal, or they can place it on their panel to steal a card from their hand. They may also place it on the appliance stack to take a card from the top of the stack. The appliance is not taken, however, until the mouse moves to a new location, which means the opponent will have a chance to get rid of the mouse. To do this, the opponent may choose, on their turn, to place the other side of their mouse, the trap, onto the appliance before it's stolen. If this happens, the mouse that was going to steal the appliance gets kicked off of the appliance and placed onto the appliance stack. If its owner moves it from the stack to an opponent's play area on a later turn, the owner of the mouse gets an appliance off the top of the stack. There is a cost to playing the mouse and trap, so this is not a free action. To play a mouse or the trap, a player must first choose a die to reduce by two value, then must use the reduced die to buy a wire tile or a party favor. Once a purchase is made, the mouse or trap may be activated. After the active player chooses to take the optional four actions, they pass their turn. Once either all players run out of dice or no player can perform more than one action on their turn, the round ends. The new round begins with players drawing a new appliance card into their hand, 
re-rolling their dice, and passing the start player marker. Eventually the fourth round will end, and at that point players tally their points. Whichever player has earned the most points from connect appliances and earned party favor cubes is the winner of Circuit Breaker. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the artwork. There's really not too much going on with the artwork because it's really mostly with the appliances and the mouse and the trap. But even with those few pieces of art, I still thought the game was really cool the way it looked. It has a 70s vibe going on with the color scheme, I think, and with the, the, the way the game is drawn. And there's a disco ball, which helps. But even without the disco ball, I felt like the game just kind of had this 70s vibe going on. So I thought the game's art was really neat, even though, like I said, there's not too much going on. And the graphic design of the game was totally fine. I didn't have any problems reading any of the cards or understanding the way things connected. You know, there's like three wire, three wires, the way that stuff worked. So overall, I thought the art was really nice and I thought the graphic design was just fine. At the beginning of this review, I told you that I was really attracted to the game for its theme because of the way I was raised around electrical and stuff like that. And funny enough, this game actually isn't really about electrical. It does have the whole, you know, theme of connecting wires and you're connecting appliances to your panel, but there's really nothing, I guess, educational that's going on. It's more like that felt like a way to apply this kind of puzzly concept of connecting tiles to, you know, end game point tiles. Uh, so the theme worked out well for that kind of puzzly concept, but it didn't really have much to do with electrical at all. And it's funny because some things, the way they're wired, like I know you wouldn't wire them to a panel themselves. So sometimes it just like made me laugh to see certain appliances and stuff like that. And some of them weren't even appliances, but it was just a, a fun theme. Um, but like I said, it really didn't have anything to do with electric. I also thought that the mouse was, it was an interesting addition and it was hard for me at first to really understand what the mouse had to do with the theme of the game. But I was kind of thinking about how maybe the mouse is like your pet and it's chewing through wires. And once you retrieve your pet, it comes back with the appliance that it's been trying to chew through. I really couldn't find any other way though to make the mouse like fit with the theme and what was going on with the tiles and whatnot. So I guess that was like a little confusing to me, but it's not like it totally threw the game off. I had to kind of make up a, a story or an idea about the mouse in my head. But like I said, it was fine. And I mean, the mouse works. So, and like I, I already said, the artwork was fine and it all kind of blended. So I just thought the mouse was weird and it took me a little while to kind of understand what it was and that it was actually a part of the game, but it's fine. Now, since I'm talking about how some of the appliances weren't actually appliances and some of them weren't really even like, you know, like party related, I have since learned that there's going to be some upgrades to some, I'm not sure which one, to, but to some of the appliances to make them more party themed. I think there's going to be like maybe uh, neon signs and then there's going to be like party lights instead of just a couple of light bulbs, maybe. I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure exactly what's being uh, taken out and replaced in the game, but I do know that some of the newer appliances are going to be more party themed, so it would work better with the theme. And I'm actually excited about that because I think, you know, some of those appliances, you know, it's like some of them weren't exciting. I got a smoke detector. That's really exciting. Although there was one smoke detector that was on fire and I thought that was kind of fun. but. Like I said, it didn't give me that party feeling. So I'm really excited to see what the new tiles are gonna be. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the mechanics and the way the game played in general. The first thing I wanna talk about is the mouse because I have a lot to say about the mouse. So you earn points in the game by collecting party favor cubes and by attaching appliances to your panel. You also get a big bonus of points if you're able to get the specific appliances that are on your secret objective card attached to your panel. Getting points by collecting party favor cubes is easy. Getting appliances, especially the appliances on your secret objective card, is not easy. And in this aspect is where I found out that the mouse is so important. I really didn't think that the mouse had too much to do with the game in general because it had, you know, you place it and then you gotta move it again and then you get the stuff, but maybe you won't cause someone's gonna put a trap on it and kick it off. And so I didn't think that the mouse was that important, but I quickly learned that the mouse is really the only way you're gonna get some appliances. Unless you just are gonna constantly trade 
the appliances from your hand and try to cycle through the deck and find the appliances on your secret objective card that way you're not you're not going to get any appliances and i mean you can also wait until the next round because everybody gets a new appliance each round but you know that mouse is so important you put that mouse on a player's play area you may end up getting kicked off, but if you get kicked off, you go to the appliance stack and you can add new appliances to your hand. This is really the only way you're gonna get appliances into your hand during the game. If you wait for each round, or if you are constantly trading, you're not gonna end up attaching anything to your panel because eventually you're going to run out of appliances in your hand and you can't trade nothing for something. So you have to have that mouse moving around. I, I really did not realize how important the mouse was until like halfway through my first game, I think. I was like, man, I am not getting any appliances. I'm not finding these things on my secret objective card. And it's because I wasn't using my mouse. So that mouse was way more important than I expected. Another thing about the mouse that doesn't really have anything to do with the appliance collecting part is I just didn't like the way that that action worked. So if you're gonna use your mouse, you have to first choose a die, reduce it down by two. But wait, there's more. You also have to take that buy action first before you can carry on with your mouse trap action. So it was like, here's an action that you're taking, but you gotta squeeze this other action in between it to complete it and it really didn't feel natural. I can understand a little bit why because let's say you reduce your die down and then you have to spend it in an additional die to buy let's say a wire tile and then a new wire tile comes out that's way cheaper and you wouldn't have had to spend all that dice. I So it's like a kind of making it a, a risk maybe to move your mouse but it just didn't feel right. I don't I mean I really don't know why you would have to wait to buy, I'm sorry, I don't know why you would have to wait to move your mouse until you use the die to buy, and it just, I don't know, it just didn't feel like it made sense in my mind. And every single game that I played, someone, probably more than once, would not do that action correctly. They would roll their die down, and then they would move their mouse, and then they would use it to buy. When you're supposed to, roll the die down, then buy, then move your mouse. And it just didn't feel natural. So, I don't know. Like I understand how the mouse was important and I didn't mind that. I didn't mind the mouse as an action in and of itself, but I didn't like the way you took the action, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on from the mouse because I think I kind of talked as much as I could about it. Like I said, I like the mouse, but there was just some things that I thought were kind of weird about it. But anyway, gonna move on. I wanna talk about the party favor cubes and like using the lower numbered dice. I thought it was a really great idea that you can choose to use these dice either to combine to buy wire tiles or you can choose them to get points for the end of the game. I like that there's an option for those lower numbered tiles, I mean lower numbered dice rolls because but I think the tiles, the cheapest tile is five. So sometimes if you were down to just ones, you'd need to do something with them. So I liked that there was a way to use those dice, of course, but I also feel like maybe there could have been an additional action that you can use the lowered numbered dice for. Like maybe, let's say you have to spend a, like two value and then you can rearrange one tile on your play area or something that allows your dice that are lowered number to have an additional action. I just felt like there could have been a little more with the lowered numbered dice. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with the party favor cubes and I thought they were a great idea because you you know, you get a lot of points from them if you end up having to use those lowered numbered dice for that. But I still feel like there was something else maybe that you could have used them for. Like I said, maybe to move a, a tile around because oftentimes players, especially newer players, would find that they were accidentally blocking themselves in because you can't have a wire enter into a wall. Wires have to touch wires. So every once in a while, but just the way that the tiles were placed, they would get blocked. So maybe if it was a cost, but you could do it to like move wires around. Cause let's be real, in the real world, you can move wires around but you gotta pay your contractor a little more to come back and fix whatever you messed up. So, I mean, that kind of goes with the theme, I guess. 
But like I said, I just feel like those lowered numbered dice rolls could have been used for one more thing. I really liked the secret objective card. I thought that the secret objective cards give each player some kind of guidance. So you, you have a reason to cycle through the deck and you have a reason to steal specific appliances from your opponents. But it was really hard sometimes to find the items on the secret objective card. And it was also really hard to get the pairs where you get an extra point for having both of the same kind. And I've since learned that the game is going to include, right now the game only has two of each appliance. And I've learned that uh, since I've received my copy of the rules, the game is going to have three of each appliance in the deck, which is going to make it a lot easier to find those pairs. But I don't know if it's going to, to mess with the game because if it's easier for you to find an additional tile, then you're less likely maybe to steal it from an opponent. But I, you know, like I said, I don't know how that's gonna play out, but it's definitely gonna make it a lot easier to get these pairs and to get these items on the secret objective card because it was really hard. And you really gotta move that mouse around, like I said, to, to get what you need. Or you gotta make sure you trade every time you have the opportunity. So I'm looking forward to seeing the changes and I hope that it makes the game better and it doesn't make it like too easy to get the secret objectives, but I think it's gonna be good. The copy of the rules I received were a little ambiguous, both the solitaire version and the multiplayer version of the game, but I've reached out to the publisher and I've asked all the questions that I came across and I feel very confident that the final copy of the rules will not be ambiguous and will be crystal clear, but I just wanted to bring that up that there were some things about the rules of this game that were a little ambiguous and the game might even have some things changed to it. So, especially because this is a prototype and it's going to be on Kickstarter. So there might be some changes and things that I've already mentioned that will change, but regarding the rules, uh, the copy I received, like I said, was a little ambiguous, but I'm very confident that the final copy is going to be crystal clear. Since I just talked about the solo version briefly, I'm gonna actually talk about that version of the game right now. I thought that the solo version of the game was fine. It played pretty much like the multiplayer version of the game. Uh, each turn, instead of having to you know, wait around for your turn to come back, you just keep taking turns until you run out of dice. You can't take the same action twice, uh, like you couldn't in a multiplayer version of the game. So you just keep taking different actions until you run out of dice. And you can either try to get the most points that you can, or you can try to get all of the items that are on your secret objective card. And sometimes I would be like in the last round and have like one die left and I would get that final secret objective tile and it was really exciting. So I think that the solo version of the game was great and it really wasn't too different from the multiplayer version. One more thing that I do wanna mention about Circuit Breaker is uh, the, the size of the tiles are pretty large. I believe they're like three inches by three inches. So they take up a good amount of table space, but I have since learned that the game is going to have the tiles reduced so they don't take up as much table space. And I think that's gonna be really great because this is a fun game and sometimes you just run out of space and things are gonna have to get shifted and you don't wanna have to deal with that when you have a ton of tiles on a table. So I'm looking forward to seeing the new tiles and I think it's gonna make the game even better. Overall, I really liked Circuit Breaker, and I think that the new changes that are going to be applied to the game are going to make it better. I think that there is going to, I think there could be some things to make it even more exciting, but they're not going to be necessary to make this game fun because I think it's already fun. I think that this is a good game for players who want to do a little bit of set collecting, but also have a little bit of resource management because you have your dice and you have to decide how you want to spend your dice. So overall, I really like this game and I think it's going to be a good game for if you're looking for something with a light strategy and plays under an hour. Circuit Breaker is going to be on Kickstarter soon. If you want to take a look at the game, check it out and get a copy for yourself, you can learn more about that down below. If you like this video or if you have any questions about the game, feel free to leave a comment down below or you can subscribe. And if you want the Indie Game Report to check out your game, check out our website down below. Thanks for watching Tiger Reviews Circuit Breaker from Freshwater Game Company. I'll see you next time.